بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Now before I begin then I'd like to say some words in light of what has recently occurred in New Zealand. And there is no doubt that that which has occurred in New Zealand, New Zealand as a result of a white supremacist fanatic uh, upon that particular ideology, his terrorist act is no doubt a means of grief and sadness for the Muslims and likewise a means of anger. But despite that, because this sadness and grief and or anger is justifiable, despite that, I'd like to just give some brief nasiha as it relates to what has occurred. And we have brothers and sisters, families that are currently grieving in New Zealand as a result of the loss of life, the loss of a husband, the loss of a wife, the loss of children, or all of those uh, previously mentioned. So us as believers in Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, then one, first we want to make sure that we are supplicating to Allah, asking Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to bestow His forgiveness and His mercy upon those that were killed oppressively in this terrorist act. Likewise, for those that were injured, for those that were injured, then we want to ask Allah to baraka wa ta'ala to heal them of their injuries and to make the pain that they are currently experiencing be a source of good for them by way of expiation of sins and thus forth and so on. And to the close relatives of victims of this terrorist act, then we want to ask Allah to baraka wa ta'ala to strengthen them in faith, making them firm upon al-Islam and to bless them with patience throughout this ordeal in which they're currently facing. Second, for those that want to help the families of the victims of this terrorist act uh, monetarily because us living in America outside of dua that's probably the most that we can do then I would encourage the believers to do so but I want to emphasize the fact that if one decides to give money that they make sure that it's going to authentic um, charity organizations or whatever means that, that's being used that in which the money uh, actually reaches the, the victims of the or the families of the victims of this terrorist act. Ensure that whoever you give your money to that your money is actually reaching them, that it actually benefits those to whom which the money is be being given. And this is a very important, especially in this day and time where people are uh, coming up with all types of scams based off the tragedies of others and only benefiting themselves. When dealing with this particular issue, 
the Muslim has to look at his his and, and or her reality. That reality being that the believer or the believers will be tested in this life. We will be tested with varying calamities. This is something that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala teaches us in this noble book. From the verses that point to this is a statement of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala in Surah Al An Ankabut, verses 1 through 3, where Allah says, Alif Lam mean. أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّا الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala he says do, do the people assume that they will be abandoned to say that we believe and that they will not be tested. And indeed, we tested those that came before them. And undoubtedly, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He knows and is fully aware of those who are truthful. And He knows and is fully aware of those that lie. He is fully aware of those that lie. This particular verse we benefit from it, or these verses, we benefit from it. Yani, or we understand that the trials that the Muslims, that will befall the Muslims, are inevitable. They're inevitable. It is a mean, it is a trial that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala puts upon the believers for varying reasons. But Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is well aware of those who are truthful in their claim to in their claim or their statement of al-iman bihi or faith in him and uh, he's well aware of those who are liars Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala doesn't just stop there by inf informing us about being tested but he also teaches us how some of these tests will come in Surah Al-Baqarah, verses 155 through 157, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He mentions uh, some of the ways and means in which these uh, tests will come. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالْثَمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ He states, and this is one, this is verse 155, And certainly we shall test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, lives, and fruits. But, but give glad tidings to those that are patient. Give glad tidings to those that are patient. So, in this particular verse, there is an emphasis on which was stated in the last verse in Surah Al-Ankabut, the last verses that were just mentioned, with the exception that Allah is detailing some of the ways these trials will befall the believers. But at the end of this verse, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala mentions that, the, that glad tidings will be given to those that are patient throughout these trials. After, in the following verses, he mentions about those who are patient. He says, أَلَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَتٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ he states, concerning the those that are patient throughout the calamities, they are those that when, a, when afflicted with the calamity, they say, truly to Allah we belong, and truly to Him we shall return. Thereupon patience 
throughout this the uh, the calamity he continues in verse 157 they are those on whom are the salawat yani though in parentheses uh, because i'm reading from the translation of the noble quran yani who those who are blessed and will be forgiven from their lord and they will receive his mercy and it is they who are the rightly guided it is they who are rightly guided thus for the believer it is incumbent upon him or her to be patient throughout the trials that they are that we are faced with and we need to understand that as long as that mm -hmm. as long as we are in this dunya the only word this dunya it's not scratch free. This, this dunya is not scratch free, meaning there's going to be times of adversity, times of grief, times of sorrow. So for, for the believer, the believer understands that we must employ something of patience in order to be successful. As sabr, as the ulama, they have stated, as sabr huwa al habs. It is to have some confinement as it relates to three affairs. The first affair, have some confinement to the obedience of Allah throughout calamities, throughout trials, throughout, throughout hardships. Yani, the second, an ma'asiyatillah. Restricting oneself from falling into disobedience to Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And the third, Ala Qadr al Mu'lama. Yani, having confinement as it relates to the decree of Allah, the painful decree of Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. The events that befall that are painful, that cause grief and thus forth and so on. That we can find, we have some confinement in that regard. We don't fall into doing that which our desires drives us towards, but we confine ourselves in that regard or in those types of circumstances to ensure that we are doing that which Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala loves and is pleased with when these trials befall us. When these trials befall us. And this is the example of those who are successful that have come before us from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in fact all the Prophets and Messengers uh, the, our, the last Prophet and Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions all of them exemplified patience during times of adversity and times of trial and so this is what uh, I encourage myself first and foremost with and secondly my sisters upon Al-Islam. Now there's one more point that I want to make before we go into the darts as it relates to this particular issue. Even if you find in this dunya a criminal similar to the terrorist that committed the atrocities in New Zealand if this type of criminal somehow escapes judgment or escapes justice in this life by way of him or her tormenting a believer or the believers, then know that this individual will never escape the torment and the punishment of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. That this type of individual will face justice, will face justice. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He teaches us in this book where He says, and this is from Surah Al-Buruj, He states, Qutila ashab al Cursed were the people of the ditch. And nari dhatil waqood a fire fed with fuel 
idhum alayha qu'ud when they sat by it yani the fire when they sat by the fire that was in a ditch that they ignited within a ditch wa hum ala ma yaf'aluna bil mu'minina shuhud and they witnessed what they were doing against the believers yani they were burning the believers alive they were burning the believers alive wa ma naqamu minhum illa an yu'minu billahi al-aziz al-hamid and they meaning the believers had no fault with them except that they believed in Allah al-aziz al-hamid this was the reason why these disbelievers were a source of torment for the believers they had a problem with them for nothing more than the fact that they believed in Allah that was a crime to them Allah continues الذي له ملك السماوات والارض والله على كل شيء شهيد to him belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and Allah is witness over everything Allah continues ان الذين فتنوا المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثم لم يتوبوا فلهم عذاب جهنم ولهم عذاب الحريق Allah states undoubtedly those who put into trial the believing men and women and do not repent to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala then they will have the torment of hell and they will have the punishment of the burning fire this is the outcome of those that put believing men and women to trial similar to that which this terrorist committed in New Zealand if he doesn't repent and return to Allah before his death he will not escape judgment with Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala on yawmul qiyamah Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala he then states after that inna alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat lahum jannatun tajri min tahtiha Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala he states verily those who believe and do righteous good deeds for them will be gardens underneath which rivers flow and that is a tremendous achievement that is a tremendous achievement this is something uh on my sisters in al islam that we should keep in mind when a group from amongst the muslims are tested and tried in this way similar to that to that which our brothers and sisters are being tested with in new zealand uh, new zealand today that the true success are for those that hold firm to faith in allah the true success is for those that adhere to the legislation of Allah the true success uh, is for those is for he or she who yani sacrifices the pleasures of this worldly life in order to be in accordance with the obedience of Allah and torment disgrace humiliation is for he who puts to trial the believer without due right and doesn't repent before he returns to Allah so we want to keep that in mind uh on account of what recently uh, what recently took place in New Zealand and i highly doubt that something of this na- of that nature that which took place in New Zealand would be the last thing that would take place uh that is similar to that within our lifetime so we want to have a outlook on where we should be when these type of things take place and a lot of barakah wa ta'ala knows best 